Greetings, Nick with Sweetwater here, and welcome to GearFest Online 2020. And I'm fortunate enough to be joined by my very good friend here, Mr. Richie Faulkner from the one, the only, the amazing British band, Judas Priest. And we're here to talk about riffs and other good stuff. So, Richie, thanks for taking the time, my friend. Nick, it's an absolute pleasure. Obviously, things are a bit different this year in terms of uh, get-togethers and uh, functions and stuff like that. But it's good that the Gear Fest is still going on in some uh, capacity, so we can all still get our gear and still record and be creative. So uh, it's awesome to be here. Cool. And the great thing about doing this via a screen is neither of us have to wear a mask. So that's the plus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a good point, actually. So i got to say that before we go any further, your, your wall is impressive. Hopefully Marshall will see this and give you a, a huge check for sort of free advertising because it's quite <laughs> amazing. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't think I've ever played Marshall with Priest, but I am somewhat of a, an enthusiast. You know, especially for the White Marshalls, I've always loved the White Marshalls, you know, Richie Blackmore and Randy Rhodes and George Lynch and, you know, the, the white ones, there was just something about them. And um, so, yeah, over the last couple of years, I've just been picking up, you know, as you know, touring around, you know, you, you get, you do a bit of um, guitar safari and gear safari and you end up all of a sudden you've got a wall of them and uh, they, they do look pretty impressive. So uh, especially, they're, they're all fake, by the way. They're, there's no speakers in them. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> Twenty. No, I'm only joking. They're all real. They're all, and they're uh, all, most of them are vintage as well. I hate the word vintage. It doesn't. Vintage doesn't really uh, make the sound. You know, it, it could be a vintage amp and it sounds like toilet. But these are actually like they're old ones. They're eighty threes and seventy nines, and there's a couple of reissues here and whatever. But there's there's, there's a few real ones, so uh, all good. Good. And you've even got the, a white two by twelve nineteen thirty six behind you as well, which is cool. This one here. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a custom order. That one, I, I can't say that's an old one. I had to right. spill some coffee on it or get it in some smoky bars before it, you know, before I can start saying that. But that's a new one that they they made for me because uh, at the time I had one JCM eight hundred white head and I wanted a nice white cab to go with it. Fast forward a couple of years and I, I've got a few more of them. So, um, but that's still here. And that's what I'm actually using at the moment. It's got a nice sort of bottom end to it, so I, I like using that one. Gotcha. And you're and you're plugged into the Plexi with, and you've jumped the. Jump, jump the channel. So you're using a pedal or anything? Or just... No pedal. No, um, I've got quite into uh, using just a flexi straight, and it's it's everything dimed. Uh, I think it's the Van Halen approach. Everything's dimed. I think I've jumped it. So you've got the bass, uh, the bass output on there as well. The bass has rolled off to about uh, eleven o'clock, um, and I think the bass tone is wound off to. I'm trying to remember about three o'clock. Other than that, everything's dimed on it, and I've just got an attenuator on it, so I'm not uh, knocking the house down. Yeah, because uh, you would do, even with a ninety, even with two, even with a two by twelve, that would be that's going to be loud. Oh, it knocks all my fillings out. So uh, yeah, just for the purpose of being in the house, uh, it's got an attenuator. But apart from that, it's just straight in. Um, I use a chorus every now and again, as I do on stage, but uh, at the moment I'm just straight in, so it's gotcha. beautiful. Cool, cool. And I've got to ask you this question, obviously. Even you know, with the with the lockdowns and everything, have you guys you know everyone's anxious anxiously awaiting a new Priest album? Even though it's only been you know 2018 was the was Firepower, but people are chomping at the bit. Have you guys had a chance to sort of get together via the the interwebs and all that stuff and write? Not writing. I mean, we did some writing in February before all this hit. I mean, I think it was uh, it was during the time it was all coming to the surface that there was this virus going around. And me and Rob, luckily, just about made it back to the States before the lockdown came into effect. But um, we did get about a month's worth of writing done. We've got a, a bunch of songs, and they're by no means finished. You know, they're, as you know, when you start writing songs, you've got a few ideas, and then they become more fleshed out. And all of a sudden, you've got a start, a middle, and an end. It's almost like a skeleton of, of bare bones. But you need some, some meat and potatoes and some muscle to put on it. So we need stuff like midsections and... Uh, harmony sections and guitar solos, lots of guitar solo. So, but as, as the the bare bones of the uh, of the songs, we've got a, we've got a, um, a, a bunch of them together. We're just waiting for the time where we can get back together again uh, and start playing them and recording them together. I mean, we found out. Well, I found out. I'd never done it like this before. But on the Firepower record, we we all played it live before we recorded them, um, and we recorded the drums live while me and Ian played, and Rob sang, and Glenn was there. Uh, and it really, you know, you've got the songs close to finished. And when you play them, you realize there's probably another 10, 15% to go. Trim some fat here. This needs another part. It's too slow here. Speed that up. 
pull this back. And that only becomes apparent, really, I found out, when you, when you play it together like you would in a, in a live gig. Um, so we, we want to get back together at some point and flesh these songs out, play together. And, um, and I'll tell you what, Scott Travis, I mean, when you get Scott Travis in a room, he's such a musical drummer and he's such a uh, respectful drummer. He loves Les Binks, he's playing, he's a huge Les Binks fan. Oh, right. um, so when he's playing the songs, he's always aware of, you know, this little Les Binks hi-hat part here, or he does things spontaneously that just change the song for the better. So getting him in a room and, and playing together is just is just monumental, I think, in the creation of a Priest record. So again, long-winded answer there, Nick, but uh, we're just waiting for the opportunity to get together and, and play in a room together. Yeah, so it's symbiotic is what you're saying. That's my big word of the day, by the way. I looked it up this morning on Google. And yeah, it's a yeah, symbiotic relationship. What a, what a concept, writing together as a unit in a room. Never no, catch on. No, exactly. No, I don't think so either, no. <laughs> so, uh, it, it really is, though. I mean, again, getting, fine-tuning those points together. Because sometimes when you do that, you write a song, you put it down, um, and let's say the, we can call it the old way now, like the digital way, like the separate way is almost becoming the old way because the new way is now becoming the way it was before that. But um, if you record it and uh, and put it down and then, you can, okay, we're going to play that song live, let's say, you play it together and it doesn't feel right. Or this part drags a little bit, it doesn't feel right. And then you think, well, if we'd have gone through this before <laughs> we recorded the song, then it would have been perfect, you know. So doing it this way around definitely helps both the, the recording of the song and the song in general and just gets the best performances out of everyone because you're trying to you're trying to match Scott's tra uh, finesse and power and Ian's thunder, you know what I mean? So it really right. brings out in everyone. Good, yeah, it's funny, like you said, like digital's fast becoming the old way. It's still a great notepad, but you know, people like yourselves and Slash as well, I interviewed Slash at the end of, actually the end of last year and he talked a lot about the importance of writing and playing together in the studio to like to get that vibe. I think it's vital really. I think you're right. These days for me, the, the digital thing uh, it's a great way to record obviously but i mean for me it's turned into a notepad so everything i can put down really easily i don't have to buy old tape machines or have a big facility to play together i can put down ideas on my phone or you know on the computer and build stuff up that way and then we can go back and do it the proper way where we all iron out those creases and, and play together the spontaneity really the spontaneity uh of four people five people playing together and the singer singing along as well is, is unmatched really i think it's vital Yep, now I hear you. And the question I have to ask, or someone will thump me afterwards, how's Mr. Tipton, Tipton doing? How's Glenn doing? Glenn's doing all right. I mean, as can be expected, really. It's, uh, it's the challenges he's facing are obviously, we all know what Parkinson's is, and it's a degenerative disease, and you can only, you know, you can keep it at bay, but it's one of those things that it's going to, it's always going to be, I'm not a doctor, but I think it's a, it's a constant progression of the disease and a constant fight to keep that back, if you know what I mean. So, right him about a week ago and he seemed in good, in good spirits he's obviously in lockdown he's going a bit nuts uh, like everyone else is because of the the lockdown and the um you know coronavirus but uh he's in good spirits and uh it's always good to check in with him every now and again and see how he's doing but he, he'll appreciate you asking and I'll, I'll let him know yeah no he's a great guy and it, at least he's got a really nice house to be locked up in oh it's beautiful especially in the summer apparently it's beautiful weather in uh, england at the moment and as you know the sun coming out in England is a rare occurrence, but when it does, it really changes the country around. You know, people, usually they come out on their bikes and have picnic and stuff, and obviously you can't do that at the moment, but, you know, Glen's place is beautiful. It's by the river, and, it's, you know, it's just beautiful to be out there. That part of the, of, of the English countryside is a beautiful place. So he loves his dog as well. So, um, so yeah, he seemed in good spirits. He seemed chipper, so that's good. Good, good, good. Now, on to the meat of the motion. Um, last time we met, which was in Detroit, you were good enough to show us a few riffs, and I'm going to start this conversation by being really selfish, because I forgot to ask you to show me how to play Lightning Strike, because I'm pretty sure I'm playing it wrong, so I'd like to see how you play that bad boy. So if you wouldn't mind spinning through it, that would be great. Is that cool? Absolutely, man. I mean, I'm probably playing it wrong as well, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's one of the, I think it was the first song that we released off the Firepower record. And it seemed to go, get a good uh, reception and kind of set the tone for the rest of the, the record. So, yeah, I'll show you how to play that. If I can remember how to play it properly, uh, no problem at all.
thanks for ruining my day because you've just proved what I suspected. I'm playing it wrong. I was actually playing an E power chord at the seventh position as opposed to you're just playing an octave. And well, that I'll tell you what, whatever, you know, my philosophy is if it sounds good to you, then it's right. You know, I play chords in different positions all over the neck. I play classic priest riffs in different positions. As long as the notes are right. Um, you know, Glenn plays the hellbent for leather riff like this. <laughs> And I play it. So I play it more. He plays it more open. And to me, there's no wrong or right answer. If it's right and it sounds good, so you know, do play it the way you want it. You know. Gotcha. But um, I must say, your your way is a lot more efficient though, because it minimizes, it takes away some hand movement because you just because you're locked in that in that position for a while. Well, I think again, everyone. Whatever's comfortable to you, really. Uh, if the notes are right, sometimes even if the notes are wrong. I mean, um, I mean, in this in this song, I play it. The interesting thing about it, everyone seems to they ask me if I'm down picking or, and to be honest, I, I don't really pay attention to how I'm picking it. I just play it the way that I feel it is comfortable. If you know right. what I mean. Um, if it turns out to be down pick, that's that's great. Usually it's not. I'm usually more of a um, like, a, like a let it roll type thing. Right. Uh, and the thing about the lightning strike song is that it, most of it is on the upstroke. So it's like, oh, it is, yeah. You know, and on the verse as well. I'm over accentuating it there, but it's it's on on the upstrokes, you know. Gotcha. Um, cool. Because well, it, that way, you felt right that way, you know. Yeah, because a lot of people think heavy metal has to be downstrokes only, and there's a place and time for that, but not always. Like you know, Dimebag was a big guy saying you they sometimes upstrokes sound better because they have oh, a different yeah. vibe and a lot a lot of times i find there's a lot of i mean i'm a huge metallica fan huge hetfield fan and he is the the god of the down pick um a lot of that stuff a lot of it's on single note stuff right. so as long as your upstroke is strong you can't tell the difference anyway you, it's like you're only hitting one note um but then he does it on chords as well and it obviously has a different tonal characteristic then but the single picking note stuff um the, you know that, that kind of stuff. It's all single note stuff. So right. to me, as long as your up game, upstroke game is good, you shouldn't be able to tell anyway. You know what I mean? Gotcha. And it's easy. So. Yeah, way easier. That's a that's that's supposed to be the like the like the gold standard of down picking. How how good is your down picking? Can you play that riff down pick only? Oh yeah, exactly. But I mean, I'm I'm a lazy I'm a lazy Brit. As I, I don't know if you are as well, but it kind of, <laughs> seems to run in our DNA. So whatever, if I can get away with playing the easy option, uh, I'm going to do it. The other thing I want to point out, which uh, I really like about the lightning strike riff, is, is you're not just using regular power chords. You've got like call inversions, like major and minor inversions. Is that part of your writing, your tools to make it more interesting, like like the B flat you play there, like you're playing it on the sixth fret and the fifth fret on the low E and A strings, as opposed to a root fifth? Do you ever think about that stuff, or is that just how it flows? I, I usually think about it when people ask me about it, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I remember I was at Sweetwater before and, um, you know, a lot of people ask me after the fact and that's when I really analyze what's going on. But usually it's a, it's a comfort thing. Tone, tone wise, I mean, I'm looking sometimes for that, you know, Randy Rhodes, Michael Schenker kind of, uh, tonal characteristics. And the, even some of the pre stuff, you know, was that, that kind of way as well. So I think it's subconscious. And conscious as well, you know, what, what is it about that song that makes me feel that way or that riff that makes me feel like that? It kind of, you know, when you hear a riff or a chord like that voiced in that way, right. it's a different story. So what is it about that that makes me feel like that? And how can I incorporate that into what I'm doing into this song um, and so on and so forth? So it's a, it's a bit conscious and a bit subconscious as well because of all the, you know, the influences in the DNA as well, like Schenker, Tipton and, you know, Randy Rhodes and all, all those guys. Cool, good answer. Well, I'm going to now ask you to please play that slowly so I can make sure I'm playing it correctly in the future. So, well, the, playing it your way as opposed to my way. <laughs> <laughs> Not that right, slowly. I'll, I'll try and play it slowly. It's sometimes, you know, we're talking about the feel and how you come up with stuff and, and why. Sometimes it's harder. You, you feel it a certain way and that's the way you play it. And then you, you know this. If, you, if someone asks you to play it slowly, it's really quite difficult, you know, because there's a you know, the way that your hand works and everything, but I'll, I'll try for you. So this is lightning strike, the riffs nice and slow for you. <laughs>
Well, thank you for that. The proverbial check is in the mail, my friend. Now, <laughs> I'm going to ask you if you wouldn't mind for one last favor. Your debut album with Priest, Halls of Valhalla, that intro riff that you that you sometimes... Well, I, last time I saw you live, you actually came out and played that by yourself, and it was just... It's one of those epic riffs, so if you could leave us with that. All I can say is thank you, my friend, and hopefully I'll see you very soon. Oh, of course, it's a pleasure, Nick, and I appreciate you saying that as well. I mean, that was one of the songs that seemed to be... You know, you never know... I mean, I don't know how to define a classic. Is it a classic sound? Is it a classic because of the age, or is it a classic style? I don't know, but it seems to be uh, one of those contenders. You know, we, it's been in the set, people ask for it, and it's a relatively new uh, track. So um, maybe it's a future classic, but it's one of those that is popular anyway. Um, and it came about, it was an um, amalgamation of about four or five riffs that I was just putting down. Um, to be split up into verses and choruses and midsections or whatever. And I think Glenn and Rob heard it and they said, no, just, just put, put it like that. So it starts with the intro, there's another riff, and then there's a solo, and then there's another breakdown, and then there's the verse riff. So it's five riffs before he even sings, because they just said, no, that's the way we've got to keep it, you know, and that's the way it turned out. But, um, but yeah, I'll, I'll play the riff for you and then uh, I'll... I'll and there's one thing I have to say is I, I'm sure without even hearing it, Zach Wilde must have loved that song because it's all about Valhalla with that gentleman. So <laughs> yeah, it's actually written about him. No, it's not. But, <laughs> uh, but no, hopefully he likes it. Yeah, without a doubt. But um, yeah, I'll play it for you and then I'll, I'll discuss a couple of things which I think which, which I think are quite interesting. They might not be, but I think they are. So this is Pools of Valhalla, a couple of riffs uh, from the Redeemer of Souls record. <laughs> I love that riff. The thing I love, I'm going to ask you to play it slowly in a minute, and the one thing I'd like you to do at the very end, if you could, is that it reminds me of Stormtrooping by Ted Nugent, the dan and 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 like that, that bit at the very end, almost a little bit like, you know, the, the way you play and the way Glenn plays. So if you could break that down when you, when you do slow it down at the end and actually play that extra, it's really slow, so I definitely get it right. I'd appreciate it. But so what do you find interesting about the riff? But it's funny you should say that because it, <laughs> that's what I was going to talk about. It's oh, it was yeah. actually, um, you know what I was talking about earlier on about how you know some of these classic songs shape our own songwriting. What is it about that uh, riff or the way that those guys play? What is it about the way that that sounds that makes me feel that way? And this was one of those conscious. Um, you know, I wasn't you know writing to order, but I'm writing with Judas Priest, and it's like what you know you're writing priest riffs, and so that. Um, was the same shape, it's the same shape as the Hellbent for Leather. Right. Uh, so it's the same uh, position. I'll, right. I'll show you it, slow it down. It's just in a, on a different set of strings. So it's the same, it's the same pattern. So uh, it was kind of like a, uh, a nod of the hat to Classic Priest in the modern age, if you know what I mean, without getting too airy-fairy about it. But that, that was where it came from, so I thought that was interesting. Oh, that is interesting. Robbing Peter to play Paul or robbing priest or robbing Judas to pay, play priest? Can you say that? Who knows? No, no. Well, yeah. I said it wrong, but who cares? I don't. I mean, no one picked up on it that I know of, so we got away with it. But I think you can do that. I think you can, uh, if it's your own song, you can reference, because it is part of the DNA of the band. You know, there's lots of references, lyrically and musically, in Priest's work over 50 years, which reference earlier times in their career. So I think it's, it's totally valid. Um, so yeah, that, that was the interesting thing. And it was cool that you picked up on that riff specifically, because that's what I wanted to say about it. That's where it came from. Interesting. It's, listen, thanks again, my friend. Really appreciate it. So if you could leave us by playing that slowly, that would be remarkable. And uh, thanks again for your time, buddy. Appreciate it. Absolutely, Nick. It's my pleasure. So uh, yeah, we'll see you very soon up there. Cool. And I'll, break, I'll break that uh, risk down for you now <laughs> before I go. Cool. Thank you.
Richie, thanks, mate. Really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Absolutely. Um, thanks, Nick. I'll speak to um, you soon, man. All right, mate. Take care now. You too, buddy. Take care. <laughs> How do I turn this off? <laughs> I'm not sure. Did you hit the red thing, I think. There you go. All right, mate. See you later. See you. Bye-bye. What a nice guy.